And now it's time for development debates. We dig deeper into some of the questions shaping the future and present of China. Today, we'll see two Chinese experts debating if the Chinese central bank should reduce its reserve requirement ratio. It seems that China's economic index during the first two months of this year have not been performing well. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that in February, the country's producer price index has seen 23 consecutive months of decreases. The purchase management index also dropped below 48 percent. Apart from that, data from the General Administration of Customs shows that last month China's exports plunged by 20 percent compared to January. Market insiders worry that if the economy continues to get worse, the Chinese government might not be able to achieve their annual targets for economic development. At the recently closed two sessions, Chinese Premier Li Keqiang announced that it would set the annual GDP growth rate at 7.5 percent. Meanwhile, he also announced that it would create 10 million new jobs this year. Reuters reported that if the economic development slows this year, the Chinese central bank might need to implement looser monetary policies. Reuters predicts that if the GDP growth rate drops below 7.5 percent, then the central bank might reduce its reserve requirement ratio to stop that trend. An analyst at Nomura Securities, Zhang Jiwei, recently published a report supporting Reuters' prediction. Zhang said that if China's GDP growth rate declined below 7.5 percent, the central bank would reduce its reserve requirement ratio by 50 base points in the second quarter. Zhang says that there would be another 50 base points decreasing in the third quarter, if the central bank believes it's needed. Zhang points out that even if China's interbank offered a rate at a low level, it still could not stop the Chinese central bank from decreasing that ratio. This is because if the country's economic development keeps slowing down, it would create a capital flow out of China. If that happens, then purchasing foreign currencies will no longer have sufficient liquidity. Zhang says that reducing the reserve requirement ratio would allow Chinese banks to use their money in any areas rather than just for lending markets. Facing slowed down economic development, the central bank needs looser monetary policies to stop that trend. Therefore, Zhang believes that reducing the reserve requirement ratio would be the best option for it. However, the chief regional economist for non-Japan Asia Credit Suisse, Tao Dong, doesn't believe that reducing the reserve requirement ratio can save China's economy. Tao admits that reducing the ratio would help ease a money shortage in small and medium-sized banks. However, it would do nothing to help change China's structural economic problems. Tao points out that so far, the cost of running the real economy in China has continued to increase. Both private capital and banks would rather invest money in financial markets rather than the real economy. Tao says that reducing the reserve requirement ratio would not encourage them to put their money into an industry where it's truly needed. Tao says that instead of reducing the ratio, it would be more effective to increase government spending. Data from the Chinese government shows that from January to February of this year, government spending only increased by 6% to 1.7 trillion yuan, or about 270 billion U.S. dollars. The increasing rate is much lower than the 10.7% from the same time last year. With that in mind, government fiscal revenues at that time increased by 11 percent to 400 billion U.S. dollars. Tao says that it's more realistic to invest money rather than decrease reserve requirement ratios to improve China's economy. A change to the reserve requirement ratio could lead to massive changes in China's banks. This is because reserve requirements affect interest rates and thus loans. Any change to the ratio could affect interest rates as a whole, which could greatly affect businesses and shadow banking, which is very involved in numerous industries. Changing the rates and increasing investments, as our experts recommend, would likely affect loans to housing developers, which is what most of China's economy depends on.